All right, all of you freedom loving boys and girls, whoever you are, wherever you are on this awesome giant blue marble of a planet we call Earth or Terra, kind of like Terra. Mark, Centerline Systems, welcome to our live stream. And as always, well, this live stream is going to be a little different. So first off, we're going to talk about the KDC and the concealment wallet. That's the main for like my gear, right? If you're here, you might want to learn about my gear. But we are also going to have a guest on, Evan Sambita from Sambita Custom Knives. That'll be about the 15-minute mark. We'll have him on. He's going to talk about some of the stuff he makes and then a few things. And I'll give you a spoiler alert right now. This is a giveaway episode. Dun, dun, dun. So start getting yourself prepared. All right. Do I have any stories to tell? Oh, I have one. Yeah. It's not really a story. It's a question for you guys. So, you know, in this little industry as a small business, you know, it's a lot of money to have a lot of different uh, materials sitting on the shelf. You know, shit ain't cheap. You know, it's not made in China. It's all no joke, true mill spec, 500 junior and all that kind of stuff. But one of the materials that we carried that really just, I was really surprised. It didn't do very well. And, it, and I'm kind of setting it up with a negative, but you guys tell me, multi-cam tropic. I mean, it just looks so badass. Now, this is one of our everyday organizers. I'm just going to kind of so you can open it up and see it just a tad, see it in all its glory and splendor. Whenever you watch this, you know, on demand, leave a comment on demand. You know, I don't know if I should bring this stuff back. You know, I'm, I'm constantly thinking of what would be a good pattern. This did not really move super well. And I don't know why, because it doesn't even look like camouflage. It looks like some of that cool fishing kind of you know, camos and colors. I mean, there's really nothing I could see wearing this as a pair of shorts or. Hey, even this cool, this shirt, if this shirt would have been multi-cam tropic, oh, hell yeah. Am I going to make myself a 500 denier shirt? Probably not. But anyway, leave me your thoughts on that as we kind of waste a little time. We'll go right there. And, you know, what do you think about multi-cam uh, 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 tropic? All right. Now, hang on. Oh, and then the one thing I almost failed to mention. So, I. Uh, not so over on mission critical podcast so mission critical podcast is going away but we had somebody who you know pay it forward stepped up and said i really like what you and redbeard were doing i'm gonna keep going with that um he's gonna have his own uh channel and but you know trying to bring in some of the same guests and the same type of concept well he is right seat riding right now so he's the guy who's kind of responding to your comments so you know if anything gets a little messed up, it's not my bad vision this time. It'll be, you know, but we'll have fun, right? We'll see. But so on that note, and so uh, he just did a comment, you know, and I guess he was telling me that he likes the way it looks, but it makes it seem like I was saying that to myself. So real quickly here, let's just kind of just say hello to everybody and then we'll jump into the KDCs. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah just bring us right down. Yeah, go, Gene from across the pond. Good evening to you, sir. Woo! And then we got another comment from Gene. Can you bring that one up for me, please? Yep. All you just have to do, hover over the next one. No, 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 no. Way, go way up to the top. Let's just kind of address them as they come in. So start after your Durka Durka and Big Visk. So Gene from across the pond. Yeah, next one right below that. Yep, there you go. Durka Durka, he has that patch. All right, keep on moving down. Jump over us. Let's see if anyone else signed in or said hello. What do we got here? Uh, it looks like a fashion camo, right? Doesn't it, Gene? Kind of does, right? All right, keep going. Yeah, learn me something. All right, how do you, sir? Hi, oh, hello to you as well. All right, keep on moving. You like uh, the tropic? It does, right? It looks really nice. Um, yeah. And then we got Elf in the house in the hizzle. And then one of my favorite internet names, names, Dave isn't funny, which I think is super funny because it is damn funny. So hello to you, Dave. Thank you very much for joining. All right. On that right there, so just remember that Dave isn't funny uh, spot. Uh, hang on a second. Yeah, you were kind of jumping a little bit too far forward. So we had learned me something. Thank you for the KDC and Superhero Blue. So go back up one. Just show that. All right. Yep. Okay. Uh, learn me something. Just hang on to that for a second. You're going to see it again. And then just end it with John, the next one. And then we'll hit a pause for a second. All right, John. Yep. Uh, Multicam Tropic is awesome. I agree with you. Hey, I've done the KDCs and the concealment wallets before, so I'm just going to kind of remind everybody what they are. Maybe talk through a little bit of, uh, oh, just some, maybe some other, oh, that sounded, sounded kind of northern Minnesota. Oh, maybe some, you betchas. Uh, but anyway, let me just show you. So so the KDC, when we first came out with this, 
this really was a long time ago. So Kevin Estella reached out to me. He wanted me to make some type of really small pouch that you could have your, like a very minimalist kit in. So this is what I came up with. KDC makes sense. It's your key everyday carry stuff. Your key EDC, KDC. I know, Mark, pretty funny for an old guy. But the version that we're, we're making right now. So you got, it's a closure on the front. You've got two tie downs up on the top. It really didn't kind of work against my white hands there, but you can see them where you can either secure them with an S beaner, a normal beaner. You could put a ferrule rod through there if you want to pan and secure it, if you wanted to use it that way. Um, or you could, you know, attach it to, uh, you know, some 550 cord, you know, make your own. Matter of fact, there's a great opportunity if you want to learn how to do some Prus different types of Prusik knots. There's different ways where you could tie this together and be able to tighten it and adjust it. And, you know, and those knots are in the back and, you know, it's always on there. That would be a fun way. Everybody should learn like five really good knots. Humble opinion. Then there's a slip pocket on the back where if you want to run extra cards or a Fresnel lens or, you know, a survival card, whatever the case is. You can put that there. Then on the inside, there's two pockets. And you'll see this a little bit more when I take mine and I'll show you. But there's two pockets. Again, those are for like cards. You know, again, imagine any of the rescues cards, the little uh, survival cards that got, you know, break out all the fishing hooks and stuff that can go in there. Then you've got elastic split into two channels. So you can put smaller items in, in there and hold them in place. And again, just even look on the website. There's a ton of pictures. Uh, survival matches, survival whistle, button compass. I mean, the list goes on and on. You do you. Figure out how you want to use it. And then to um, learn me something, Superhero Blue, that's what he's talking about right there. Superhero Blue. Da, da, da. Same product. Yeah, you can see those tabs on the back. We used to have a couple different options, a belt loop and tabs on bottom, but just trying to keep everything going here, we're doing that. Uh, and then Gene, yeah, you got to love the ATAX. Let me bring that one back up. So that's another one, you know, so stay tuned. I'm pretty much out of my ATAX except for some stuff I've already cut. So this might not be coming back. And this is the original ATAX AU, the original ATAX AU and the, and the ATAX FG, hands down, especially the FG, just one of my favorite patterns. I really love this AU. Um, even here in Northern Minnesota, late fall, spring when it's all muddy and brown, and even in the snow in the wintertime, um, and I, you, you may have seen some pictures of this garment I made for myself out of this material. It even works in the wintertime. So that's the AU. Looks good. Um, and then so here's one of the old versions now. So again, to what we're kind of talking about. So this has a belt loop version on the back. This goes on my Sherpa belt for when I'm hunting. And this one had tabs on the bottom. I can actually run my ferrule rod through there and then secure it in place so it doesn't go any place. Um, all right, give me a second. Keep that one up. Uh, keep Elf's comment up there. I'll come to that in a second because that's actually one of the compelling reasons I made that comment right there. But then you can see, so this is my emergency fire signal kit that I carry out with me when I'm hunting, right? So this is on my person when i'm hunting i've got you know i'm not going to pull it apart but you can see back here that's a signal mirror i've got a whistle i've got a whole bunch of those really great survival matches like you light them put them in water take them out you know and they're still lit you know so a, just a pretty good robust emergency signals kit in case i was out in the woods and i got injured i'd have a couple different ways just even in this little option right here on my belt i still got some ways to do emergency signal and that's pretty important now, before I go into the concealment wallet version of it, let me get to Elf's comment. So Elf sent a picture. So if you go to my Instagram, uh, it, and you don't have to have an Instagram account, you should be able to go to the end, the bottom of my main, my homepage, and then click on the little Elf uh, Instagram um, icon. But Al, Elf here, uh, 3553, he sent a picture. He has one of these, uh, the KDCs, and he sent a really cool picture. And then, so again, talking about different knots, and he talks about what type of knot he used to make that necklace. And there, there's a couple different options out there, but Elf uh, 3553 knows what I'm talking about. And so you got to get out there. You got to learn some knots. If you want to have a better sense, go to that picture. Um, and uh, hey, Al, I know there was a little bit of a time delay. I don't remember what color you were, you had, but it's one of the most recent ones I've done on the KDC. So go look that up. But And, and maybe I will start doing a little bit of, you know, some others. Well, you know, st stay tuned on the training side of it because that would be one thing right there. If you don't know how to tie knots, 
and you want somebody to teach you, well, I mean, okay, you need to find, you need to learn how to tie, in my humble opinion, at least five good knots. And there's a couple different types. And then to Al's point here, um, yeah, you know, that butterfly knot, there's Prusik knots, butterfly knots, there's co all kinds of different kind of little combinations, end of the line, bowling, figure eights, you know, X, Y's and Z's just made that knot up. But uh, yeah, so that's a really good knot that he used to secure his key DC. So just go take a look at that or just look at, you know, we've got it posted here. Just see what a butterfly knot is. And then there's a gazillion different ways where you'll find that piece of information. All right. Um, my good man, right seat riding me, uh, David, if you don't mind just getting rid of, yep, there we go. And I think we're kind of caught up. And then where are we time-wise here? 10 minutes. Okay. So our, um, our guest isn't quite here yet, and that's perfect because now I want to take a little sip and then I'm going to talk about the difference between the concealment wallet, which we have on my website right now. Uh, Jack from Black Scud Survival had to move his whole shop. And I'm here to tell you that ain't no easy task. Had to move his whole shop. Uh, there was all kinds of, you know, as you can imagine, issues there. I, I think I still have these, his version uh, up for sale on my website. And I'm going to show you some things. You can still get it at my website if you want, if you don't want to use this for the more surreptitious entry and i'll kind of get into that in a second you know the more foreign travel concealment you know he's got those things and but he has a lot of those small devices and tools that you might want to carry with you now my only caveat there is if you're carrying this stuff on your person and then you're in a foreign country i'm here to tell you you could find yourself in some pretty deep shit so you know you're not a spy don't just because you know what you saw one of my videos it don't work like that so you know, there's guys out there talking about putting shit under your skin and like, okay, good, good luck with that there, John Wayne. So, but, but maybe you're just into it and you like to do, because I'm here to tell you my background and experience that I've gotten into a ton of friends, houses and vehicles who left their keys inside. I mean, so there is a reason for that skill set. There genuinely is, but I'm just advising, you know, if you're going to be trying to foreign travel and try to be a cool guy, well, the moment you get rolled up, uh, that ain't going to be that cool anymore. Right. And we got, uh, Roger Coffee, Texas in the house. Now, David, if you don't mind, uh, don't, yeah, just let me kind of, you know, yeah, there you go. Cause you know, we'll let a couple build up and we'll use those as transitions. Thank you, sir. Um, so interior on the Black Scout Survival, this is black, uh, but you can, hopefully you can see that. It, it's the, the same interior, the main difference between the two products. Well, one, you got that cool Black Scout Survival logo on it. And that's always a badass logo. But it's the ulti clip that we use that's in the back. Now, for me, I'm not going to lie, uh, I use mine as a wallet. This is like a really minimalist wallet. That's why it's called the concealment wallet. Because one of the things you might just do is run it something like this. I mean, that's no joke, my wallet. Spare key, micro flashlight, got a small micro thing for my no shit. Don't ever want to get caught without uh, meds. Then I'm just running like four cards and then. And then for me, if I ever have a couple bucks, then I just use the ulti clip on the back and that's where I keep my money. But as I've pointed out in other videos, if you're at the beach, you're out jogging, you're hiking, you're a female, like that ulti clip, it's approximately, I, I can't remember what it is, but I think it's like 70 pounds of pressure. When this thing is on, it's on. Uh, yeah, that should show up. So here, I'm just going to hook it to my shirt. And matter of fact, and there's a lot of companies that use ulti clips, different versions for their holsters for, you know, if you're carrying inside the waistband, stuff like that. So, so very, and it's American made uh, American company. They're really awesome. Great, easy to deal with from a business perspective. And I like the product. So imagine, you know, if you're a female or a male, you know, like, you know, a female, you know, what I'm talking about you guys bras, hopefully you're wearing bras, but if you're not wearing bras, Hey, you know, more power to you do you. But what I'm just trying to get at here is you know, and, and that's on, this is on a really thin shirt. You can look, I honestly, oh, I bet I could keep doing this here. I'm going to start trying to tap myself out. You know, I'm just going to do a cross collar choke. That ulti clip is not coming out and I could almost cross collar choke myself there. All right. Let me see if I jammed it up there so much. I can't get it off, but do that inside of your running shorts, inside of your shirt, inside of a bra. So if you were foreign travel, like think about that, you know, and or maybe you've got like a throwaway wallet, right? Think about that kind of stuff. Here's your throwaway wallet. And this guy is concealed inside your waistline, inside your bra, inside your shirt, inside some other type of area. And your real documents, your real money, your real cards are inside of here. 
And then as I was kind of saying, and I see we've got Evan. So, and what's my time? And this is almost perfect. I'm at 15 minutes. Evan, I apologize. Hang with me, brother. I'll be there in a second. But, but the one thing I want to point out. So if you want the concealment wallet and you want to trick it out like we do, you know, like, you know, again, you want to do different color threads, logos, all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah, you can buy it for me. Jack has set colors and he's back up and running now. But the key thing about getting them from Black Scout is he's got all the, if you want to call them the little lickies and chewies, right? If you are going to look at it for more surreptitious, like, so there's like, you know, handcuff key. Here's a different type of handcuff key. Here's, you know, a bunch of shims and rakes. And like, you know, by the way, I'll show you something, something in a second. So, you know, you got, all of your stuff, if you're into that, if that's what you practice, if that's what you want to be able to do. And then I'm here to tell you, it's a good skill to have. I've I've had friends laughing at me and then I'm like getting them back in their vehicle or inside their house. And I'm like, yeah, it ain't so funny now, you know, or if you're out there making your own stuff, this is one of the things that I made on my own once, right? So, you know, you get the point if you're into that stuff, rakes, picks, shims, you know, small little cutting tools. If that's what it's going to be and that's your no joke, hey, I'm operating in a, a less than, as Jeremy says, a less than optimal, you know, environment. There's other ways of saying it, but, uh, you know, little button compasses you might want to put in there for a little survival stuff. So you do you and you figure it out, but it's a great tool for that. Uh, and that ulti clip, I think really brings that along, but the same thing over on the, here, I'm going to use the blue one, but the same over on the KDC, this could be, you know, around your neck. And you're out in the woods doing stuff. And no matter what, this is always on your person. And that could be your no joke fire kit, signals kit, meds, whatever it is. So better to have and not need than need and not have. All right. Uh, Evan, how are you doing over there, sir? Give me a thumbs up if you're good. I can't hear you yet. But yeah, okay. So we're just going to do a couple comments, Evan, and then I'm going to bring you on. So uh, David, if you would be so kind on where we left off. Uh, looks like actually the only co comments that we haven't talked about is... Well, and then we got Roger Coffee above that with Texas in the house. What up, Lone Star? And then Elf, uh, mine was Atax FG. And, and there you go. And that's the great thing, what Elf just said. And he, in his final comment was, I was playing with it today and to try to figure out the different, different things I could get in there and how I could set it up. That is the glory of gear. And that's why you'll see me just use a lot of different pictures sometimes because you do you. I don't know who you are. I don't know your physical capabilities or constraints. I don't know your envir environmental considerations. I don't know your familial considerations, your medical, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is no cookie cutter, cutter, in my humble opinion, when it comes to survival, personal safety, there's no one cookie cutter. Maybe some things work better more often than not, but every individual. But if you got a bad rotator, rotator cuff, maybe you can't rack the slide on a semi-auto, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, we got one more comment here. <laughs> Is my DJ Marky Mark still up there? I was supposed to be a joke. Yeah, somebody called me DJ Marky Mark and I put it up. I think you know who you are, sir. Uh, and then we've got Ann Barry. I appreciate you, brother. Well, thank you very much, Ann. That's a cool looking hat you got on there. All right. Without further ado, let's bring on our guest. I still have a giveaway to do, but this is going to make more sense when we get Evan talking the giveaway I'm doing. David, if you would be so kind as to bring Evan up full screen. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. He's going to be killing it when he starts the podcast himself. He's going to be crushing it. Evan, Sambita, how the hell are you doing, sir? Thank you for joining us. Doing good, man. How about you? I'm actually going to rotate my camera here because apparently all the cool kids are set up horizontal there, and I'm set 90 degrees. Oh, uh, that work? Oh, oh yeah. heck yeah. Look oh, at that. heck yeah. We get, we get to see that beard in all of its glory. I mean, that was pretty good. There we go. <laughs> hey, so... Oh. I know we've got a couple things that I really hope you're still willing to talk about, like on the food side, the natural side of it. But do you can you take just like, you know, three to five minutes, let everybody know who you are, what it is you do and how they can find your kick ass, uh, your kick ass gear. Yeah. And David, uh, so while he's talking, bring him up full screen if you know how to do that. And if you don't, I'll do it. No, not me. That was close. But do that with Evan. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm Evan Simbita. I'm the owner. I'm the, like I'm the one man show at uh, Simbita Custom Knives. Uh, I make custom knives. I make knives primarily for the outdoorsmen, um, for backpack hunters, guys that are into the extreme outdoor hunting scene. So like I say extreme, I mean like there's a lot of guys that hunt whitetail in the back forty, which is awesome. A lot of people do that. 
Um, but my main thing is the guys that carry like their entire life on their back. They live out of their backpack for like 14 days while chasing mountain sheep, mountain goats, uh, things like that up in Alaska or high up high altitude in the, the Rockies. <coughs> Apologize. I'm kind of getting over something here, but, um, uh, so that's my main thing, but I also do a lot of culinary stuff. I do stuff for self-defense. I do kind of the tactical thing. Um, this is sort of like my you know, cross between a Bowie and a tactical knife. Um, it's my truck knife right there. But, uh, and I've lately been getting into wild boar hunting with a knife, which is kind of cool. Um, actually going here in another couple of weeks on a hunt for that. Um, I do one, two, three of those a year. That's kind of how I keep in the meat in the freezer other than hunting in the fall. But um, I've been primar primarily doing that kind of stuff. Lately, I've been diving pretty heavy into the culinary stuff. So I've got, ah, I think last count, 11 or 12 different kitchen knives in my lineup. And uh, they're all stuff I've designed with my own signature handles. The primary thing is this is another one of my uh, sort of fighting knives. It's my boar hunting knife, but the handle is my signature shape. I call it the tadpole handle. And uh, as you can see here, it kind of tapers off kind of small there towards the back. A lot of people are weirded out by it until they hold one. And then they realize that actually kind of, it's almost like it's made for the human hand. Whenever you're putting, working on a knife, using a knife, that's a lever. You put force here, it pivots and it pivots right where your index finger's at. Back here, never pushes back into your hand. It always pushes away from your hand. So by having it smaller, you have the ability to change the angle of the knife in relation to your arm by just changing tension in your hand. So it gives you just a little more control, a little more finesse, and uh, and it looks cool. So that's kind of my thing. Um, like I said, I do a lot of hunting. So um, my freezer wow. is pretty stocked with meat. Uh, most uh, stuff slow down. Uh, don't don't spoiler alert it. Yeah, I want that's what no. I want you to talk about. But where can they find you? How can they get in contact with you? To see? well, and, and I'm sorry, I jumped ahead of myself. Can you also talk about those badass? Uh, and again, I know you and I have talked talk about that's not my Carter, but you got those handles that got like the luminescent material inside there too. I don't have any on these two that are sitting here. Actually, I don't have anything on me personally. No, no, but it's, maybe uh, just explain. Yeah, maybe just explain that process and how that looks and where they can find you so they can see. Oh, some yeah, of your yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so again, I apologize for the occasional coughing. I'm getting over something. I'm not sure what it is. It's probably COVID, you know, the next. 400 strain but aside from that um <laughs> hey just all get, the weird just get 20 boosters and you'll be fine sir all, all well only 20 sir it's at least 25 uh, I'm, um, I'm, I'm i'm old and and i'm not keeping up with the james <laughs> story now given all the weird stuff i eat if you ask my friends and family like i'm probably going to be the next weird pandemic is going to be patient zero right here the possum flu or something like that um <laughs> in the book of genesis god said he looked at his creation and said it was good and i take that literal so um <laughs> but no so my number one place to look at my work is instagram i'm simbita custom knives it's underscore between each each word there um i'm sure that'll be in the show notes uh because the spelling of my last name is pretty weird but um i'm gonna do it right now i appreciate it i pretty much everything i post or i make i post on there the only exception is if i do like um occasionally i'll do a limited edition serialized run of identical knives for the backcountry hunting podcast and when i do that uh, there's no sense in pointing or posting like 40 pictures of exactly the same knife. So I'll post a picture of a group of them. And then it's like, Hey guys, I'm going to be working on these for the next couple of weeks. Um, hey, Evan, just real quickly. Did yeah. you, can you see, did I do it correctly? Is that correct? Is that oh, your Instagram handle? That's it. There yep. it is. Yeah, okay. Yep. That's where you can find them on Instagram boys and girls. Yeah. So whenever I make anything though, like if I make a custom order, a lot of the stuff I post in there are custom orders. So it's only available if it says in the caption, available, DM me if you're interested. Um, as of today, right now at this moment, we have I have one available. Um, I do one or two open sale knives every single week. And then uh, the rest of my stuff is custom orders. So um, if you want to get a custom knife, you got to get a hold of me. I'll put you on the wait list. It's about eight months out. Um, it's been fluctuating anywhere between 11 and six months. Um, it's it kind of steering towards you know the 10 month range. Right now it's about eight. Um, but anyway, once you get to the top of the list, we work out a custom order that you want and then I make it. Uh, in addition to the custom orders, occasionally I just feel like breaking out of the mold or using something that I've been sitting on for a while material wise. Uh, or maybe I just feel like flexing creatively and I make something I post up for sale and it gives people a crack at something without waiting. 
So um, everybody gets a little something on there, but everything I make, I post on my, my social media. So also Facebook, same thing, but Instagram is the best to see stuff just because it's easier to navigate than Facebook in my opinion, but it's just a giant working portfolio. So you can see everything I've made, everything I continue to make. And it gives you a lot of ways to see uh, different handle materials I've worked for with everything from carbon fiber and shredded rags to, um, I don't know, bones from extinct animals, all kinds of crazy stuff. I've worked with and, and the phosphorescent materials. Yeah, yeah, glow yeah. in the dark stuff. So I've lately been working with a lot of glow in the dark materials. Everybody seems to like those. Um, I guess we never grow up because I love the glow in the dark stuff. So I'm, I'm talking about myself. Um, I, I work with a lot of glow in the dark liners. Um, so if you look at this, this is elk antler. Oh, right? Give me a second. Let me bring you back full screen. Give me a sec. All right, there you go. <coughs> so this is elk antler. But if you look, there's the black pinstripes between the steel and the elk antler. Those are called liners. Um, I will often use liners that are glow in the dark. And traditionally, glow in the dark all looked like the glow in the dark plastic stars we put on the you know the ceiling of our kids' rooms. And um, yeah, you know, I still have those. Key. I still have those in my room, Evan. Yeah. So I mean, come on, man. <laughs> so it's well, it's like a milky greenish white color, right? And then it glow. It looks really cool in the dark, but in daylight, it doesn't really look like much. Um, that used to be what I was limited to. Um, there's a couple companies that I buy liner materials through. That's all they make is liner stuff. And um, they have stuff that not only looks good in daylight, like say it glows blue and it looks blue, like navy blue during daylight and it glows bright blue at night. Um, they also have stuff that looks like metal and it glows during the night. So like uh, there's some stuff that looks like aluminum, copper, even just jet black, but it glows bright, bright green, bright blue. Um, a couple other colors and they look like something entirely different during daylight which is super cool yeah so i work with those and then i've also got some other materials that happen to glow like glow in the dark carbon fiber it looks like carbon fiber during the day i mean it is carbon fiber but there's glow pigment in the resin that's binding the fiber and weave together to make it solid and so um during daylight it looks like carbon fiber but in the dark after it's been charged up with a headlamp it looks like it's got uranium and it's about to go nuclear it's pretty cool stuff yeah, uh, uh, no, that's really cool. Hey, we're going to do an audible here. We're at 27. Uh, I got to do a quick giveaway, and then I then I want to transition, and I think the giveaway will be a nice transition into what, you know, what your one of your passions are, which I really want you to talk about. You know, I think it was two weeks ago, you know, as one of my just buying a little time as I was, you know, waiting for people to be able to get catch up on the live stream. I showed everybody, you know, I just glassed eggs for the first time and how awesome and easy oh, yeah. that was. Yeah. So, so I mean, one of the, the messages I kind of want to get out there to people like, you know, you know, I know there's people who don't like, you know, handguns and personal defense, but you know, I'm just trying to say, but if you think you can beat a grizzly bear, I mean, like whatever you do, you right. But there's a lot of people who don't feel that way and they want to carry. So, and you know, on the hunting side, a lot of people don't like hunting. I personally love hunting, right. And, you know, and glassing eggs and doing my own canning. One of the areas that I'm definitely weak at, I want to improve in is I want to learn a lot more about botanicals. I want to be able to just go you know, naturally harvest and know more about medicinal and edible properties. But before I do this, I just want to point out, and you may not remember this, this yeah, little guy. That. Yeah. So now this is my pledge to Evan. So as you guys, if you've been following my channel, you know that I have had my own series of like, first my back went out and then my hip went out. So I care about myself. Yeah, there, there it is. Yeah, badass. Ah. And I like your handle on that one too. Um, but but where I want to go with this is, so I haven't been able to bow hunt uh, pretty much at all in like almost three, four years. And, you know, this guy has got such a nice size. And going back into that tadpole design you're talking about, it fits nicely. And when you're field dressing a deer, there's time when you're up there, you know, separating or you're maybe up inside of a cavity. And this is just me. You, everybody does you like when you're with a, if your knife is too large, I think it's a little cumbersome. You know, I still owe Evan, uh, uh, you know, uh, this as a tasker. I like this because it's my, I can get it right on my fingertip and I could be down inside there and just no risk of cutting myself, no risk of anything and processing through. And I'm here to tell you this little bad boy came pretty effing sharp. So it scares me to some extent too, but, uh, I just had to throw that out there and then I'm going to do a giveaway, but maybe that was a nice segue talking about wild game and processing and the benefits of wild game from your, uh, 
opinion. And then also maybe you just start that off with uh, telling everybody how you've been really giving me shit the last couple of weeks with all your pictures about all the wild game you've been eating. So, well, somebody has to. <laughs> yeah, right, right. All right, here we go, boys and girls. I'm going to pull off. Uh, I'm going to leave Sambita custom knives up there still. You can see uh, that's how you find them on Instagram. But here we go. This is going to be down and dirty. If you are into hunting or if you understand. Yeah, see, I can't say that because I'll be giving away. Here's the question. All right, David, drum roll. Are you ready? Here we go. Here we go, boys and girls. All right, when we say grains. What does that really mean? What does that really signify? What are we really talking about? Grains. When you hear the term grains, think hunting, think weapons. When you hear grains, what does that really mean? First person to um, post what the, an answer. And there's Mick R. Uh, I will accept that. I would have accepted uh, the weight of the bullet. Well, yeah, Big Vis got it in there too. All right. Yeah, an elf. Okay, you guys are all getting Yeah, so yeah. It can be the weight of the the projectile itself, or it can be depending on. It can also be the weight of the um the you know the the powder, the ammunition. It also applies to arrows. So yeah, it's a it's a unit of measurement. That's I would have accepted that too. But so we've got. Let me just slow this down here. So I know there's always time delays, but Mick R, he got it first. John Williams. You know, I've seen, but okay, mix first, John came in second, Dave came in third. Now, this is where, Dave, I'm sorry, uh, maybe I'll hook you up with something else, Dave, because you guys all, well, you know, honestly, you all came in at the same time, so I'm just going to have to put my foot down. All right, I can I can hook two people up, so I'll, I'll accept that there may have been a tie, but, you know, Al Gore's super information highway may not work as fast for everybody. So, Mick R and John Williams, you guys send me an email. Mark at center dash line dash systems. I guess I should have told you what you could have won or what you just won before I even because you may not want it. I was going through some stuff. I got kit and pouches everywhere, and I found four of these guys. And these are my old shotgun S cards. They can be worn a couple different ways. They can be affixed a couple different ways. They can go on your belt line. You can here. I'll kind of just show you. You know, I could weave them through a shoulder strap. I can velcro them. I can run and again and when i when i send them to you, if you got any questions i might send them partially configured and then you'll you'll be it'll be so easy because then this piece goes around your the rear of your butt stock and so it's actually kind of coming like this and it goes back through and comes on itself so to each of these so if you guys send me an email mark at center dash line dash systems might just be able to hook you up with a couple i can hook the two of you up because i only have four of them well, here, I'm going to let you guys decide. Or do you guys all just want one each and I send them out to four? And if that was the case, it would be Mick, John, Dave isn't funny, and Big Visc. You guys in the comments, you let me know. Otherwise, because I can see it'll be Mick and John. But if I get a bunch of people say, no, let's spread the wealth, um, then I'll do it to four people. Dave just said, he don't worry about me. Oh, Mick. Okay. Mick is very, very nice. He just said, Hey, happy to win, but I don't hunt here in the UK. So Mick, I could maybe hook you up with something else, but I don't really have anything else right now. Um, fine with me. All right. You know what? So here, I'm going to make a command decision. Cause then I want to get back over here to Kevin or a uh, correction, Evan. And I'm already taking a little bit too much time. So here we got, here's what we got. Mick just said, that's awesome, but he lives overseas and doesn't hunt. So Mick, you ever purchase anything from me? I can't speak for anybody else, but I'll hook you up with some kind of deal. Just let me know. So right now, and I got a couple people say that's fine. Fine. Let Mick and John. Well, actually, why don't we let Mick decide? Mick, you said, please send it to somebody who hunts, right? Well, so that would just, I'd bump it down. But Mick, why don't you just make the decision? I've got four of these. Should I just do one each per person? You really kind of don't need two. I mean, unless you're like all John Rambo and you got two shotguns, one in each hand, right? So. Uh, Mick, you say this, four, four e one each to four people or two to two people. Mick, you decide. One each. There it is. So here we go. And we'll put an end to this. We'll put the, uh, we'll put a knife in it. One of Evan's knives. Evan, put a knife in this for us. All right. So here's what we got. John E, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Dave isn't funny. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Big Visc, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Al, winner, winner, chicken dinner. 
you four gentlemen, shoot me an email. Most of you guys, I know a couple of you already know my email, mark at center-line-systems.com. Be so kind as, you know, just make sure you got your phone number and your shipping information. And I will send each, all four of you, one of these things in the mail tomorrow or Saturday. And once it arrives, if you have any questions on how to set it up, give me a holler and I'll talk you through it. Maybe we even do something like this, just like this in private. So, um, uh, and then, uh, I just got to throw this up and let's come back over to Evan. All right. This is going to go just a little bit longer guys, but you need to hear what Evan has to say, but I just have to throw this up there. Uh, Gene apparently didn't get the answer because he had too much bourbon in his flask. I don't know what that meant, but, uh, that's awesome right there. So, all right. Uh, and then last comment right here, and then we should be caught up, uh, David kind of driving just to keep it going. I want to get it back over to Evan, but big visc. If you don't use, if you don't use a shotgun in each hand, you're slacking. Evan, what are your comments on that? Let's take it then in, into over to you on the hunting side. You know, if you don't mind, how about just roll with it for 10 minutes? Let everybody kind of know. I, I made a joke, but I'm serious. Evan is a consummate. Evan's doing what I wanted to do when I first left the agency. So Evan, why don't you kind of, you know, if you don't mind about 10 minutes, tell everybody what you're doing and the glory and the benefit and how awesome it is. Well, first I gotta I gotta pick on the last comment. He said that you gotta do a shotgun in each handle unless you're doing it wrong. I'm not a shotgun guy, I'm a rifle guy, and uh, I use a 458 Win Mag, which for those who don't know, is like a 4570, but for men. Um oh that is so not comment. fair. I do 4570 is a good <laughs> gun, man. Jeez. That's <laughs> little, little. It's little. Okay, that's what she it's said. Little. Right? The yeah. hell, man. Well, well, 450, for those who don't know, a 458 Win Mag is actually an elephant cartridge. It's designed for the sole purpose of flattening the largest land animal, most one of the most dangerous land animals known to man. It's insane, right? Um, but in Ohio, we have this really interesting set of rules. You can't hunt with a cartridge when it's gun season, rifle season. You can't hunt with a cartridge that has a bottleneck, right? So like 30-06, 270, even a 30-30, not allowed. Has to have straight size. So you can hunt with a 350 Legend, a 4570, 450 Bushmaster. Um, it just has to be straight wall and above 35 caliber, right? 35 caliber or bigger. Um, there's no power or length restrictions. So um, me being as petty as I am, I chose why not my elephant rifle? So I hunt with the 458 Win Mag for deer in Ohio. Um, I use a 350 grain bullet pushed about as fast as a 308 pushes 150 grain bullet. And uh, um, actually, I don't know if you can see it in the thing, but I was at the range a little bit ago and I've got a nice big purple spot. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's brutal. So I pick on people that hunt with anything smaller, which is literally everything. Um, and it beats me up. I can't shoot more than like five times and I'm done. But Anyway, aside from that, yeah, I, I hunt. I hunt everything. Um, everybody picks on me. Like all my friends, like pick on me because unless it's hunting, I'm not interested. Hey, do you want to go to this concert? It's a band we know you listen to. Nah, I'm better be busy hunting. Hey, uh, you know, you want to come to this this family event? Nah, I'm gonna be hunting. Everybody jokes I'm gonna be late to my own wedding because I'm gonna be hunting. So. That's kind of all better, I do. Better that you're working. late to your own funeral because you're hunting. That would be a good. I, one you know, I probably, I probably would be. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that the girl I'm probably going to be marrying is, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to be, uh, is a better shot than I am. And she has just as much thirst for hung, hunting as I do. Um, that would be true, but she's, she'll probably be there with me. <laughs> hey, all right. So besides you trying to talk smack about, you know, the caliber of the, uh, platform you're using literally, I think one of the things I really love and respect about you, you know, since, you know, we haven't really known each other for too terribly long, but is that you are passionate about it. And that's something I really wanted to be able to do just for me as a person when yeah. I first came out. And then just as the business, I mean, like, look, I make outdoor gear. I wish, you know, and then, you know, life and everything happens and slows you down. But, you know, you've kind of helped me vicariously by just like, oh, I wonder what Evan's doing. Oh, I'm just coming back from a pig hunt. Wonder what Evan's doing. Hey, I just, I got some white, I got some deer in process, or I'm just, I got venison on the grill, whatever. It's always some in your face, but it's always cool. So, so like, why do you do that? What, what, you know, besides, you know, like, well, here, well, you, you know, you see where I'm going. This like, why, what, why the, why the passion for having all of that wild game? Look, there's grocery stores, Evan. Why don't you just go to the grocery store? <laughs> 
Well, like, so first and foremost, like, it's not because of any altruistic, like, there's, there's certainly things I can attribute to it, and I can use to justify how I live. Um, and I, I, I stand by those, but you know, as far as conservation and things like that, but when it comes down to it, even if those didn't apply, I just like red meat a lot. I like it so much that all the people that are like, you should only eat so much red meat per week and whatever. I eat red meat every single day, at least one meal a day. Sometimes as much as three times a day. And then at the middle of the night, late night snack, it's leftover red meat. Um, beef tastes gamey to me at this point. I eat so much venison. And uh, I just I just eat a lot of red meat. So like, and I like hunting. So hunting basically keeps me in red meat. I've got three big freezers in my house that are full of red meat all the time. I usually now, just to slow down though, like because I stuff. But just to just I have to inter interject real quickly because I think so many people when they hear red meat they just think you're talking beef, like that's Dude, where I'm most. Talking... I, I, I know, no, I'm, I know, but the average <laughs> person thinks you're talking yeah. beef right now. Yeah. No, I'm I'm talking whitetail. I'm talking Audad, which is like a, a sheep that lives down. Like, well, they live down in Texas. I've got some friends that have them on their property um, down south, but they're from the Middle East. Um, black buck, whitetail, pronghorn antelope, um, elk. I mean, anything that's got red meat that's wild, I'm totally into. And on top of that, wild boar. And I get I get into a lot of wild boar every year. I've got friends down south, and I go down hunting two, three times a year for wild boar. Uh, that's kind of how I get all my pork. Really, the only thing I buy is bacon. And that's because I eat more bacon than I can make um, because I'm super healthy like that. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, well, actually, you know, that, like, but, but I mean, I think the reason I wanted you to say that not for us to get into a medical conversation, but there, there are definitely a heart health benefits. I mean, you know, again, everybody do your own research. We're not doctors, although I played one on TV, you know, uh, <laughs> none of that kind of crap, but, but, you know, go do your thing. There, there, there's all kinds of ca carnivore diets and all that stuff. And look, and if you really look at it, I, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I, Evan, I think there's more potassium in bacon than there is in a banana right so yeah, i mean yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. don't just throw the bacon out with the bath water you know and it you know you know it tastes good so right well i was i was jokingly calling meat cigarettes you know um <laughs> but it's it's so good and actually right now i've got uh some whitetail backstrap i've got some friends coming over actually they might be over right now downstairs i've um, got the grill fired up I've got are they drinking your grill. booze probably but i brought i bought some for them so it's okay uh i <laughs> Um, I've got whitetail backstrap, which for those that don't know is, uh, it, with pork, you would call a tenderloin, but it's the muscles that run down the back. And I've got those wrapped in bacon and I'm going to be cooking over wood fire on my kudu grill. So I'm doing that. And then my girlfriend is cooking up, uh, some walleye from Lake Erie or frying up and making tacos with, so it's going to be a good time. Walleye from Lake Erie. Okay. I live in the land of 10,000 lakes and, uh, I'm now that one we might have to have a little, and our deer are much bit larger than yours, I'm sure too. But you know, but I, I see uh, well, you well, were so you were dogging you were dogging on forty five seventy, so I had to throw that out there. Like I don't know if I well, eat so any fish out of Lake Erie, and if anyone's watching, you know what I'm talking about. Like if you've been to Iraq, you know that. So I I, can't, I think it's called moth uh moth uh, but it's it's the cod fish, and like you know I can eat chicken, vegetables, all that stuff from Iraq, you know. Um, Love the dates and the figs and all that, but like that fish, mafgoosh, I think is what it was. Man, that stuff goes through you. Like, and I just imagine, like, no offense, <laughs> Lake Erie, I just got to pick on you because you know, Lake Superior, we're the superior lake with 10,000 other smaller lakes and tons of great well, some, wildlife. Someday, I want to see Lake Superior. Right? That's to me, the idea of a lake that's as deep as Lake Superior seems really cool to me. But uh, I'm more of a, I'm more of a meat guy than a fish guy, but um. Ironically enough, as things would have it, my girlfriend is a big time fish girl. So we kind of balance each other out. And, uh, but yeah, walleye. And then I also do a bunch of river catfish here in Southern Ohio. So good stuff. Uh, I will just say this. Uh, so even up here, Northern or Pike, they're fun to fish because they can put up a really good fight. And, you know, you're, you can get some just mammoth fish from an inland lake. But I never grew up really liking them because they're really bony. But uh, yeah. I think it was like six, six years ago. Uh, somebody I knew, you know, we're all hanging out their place, uh, you know, at a summer barbecue and they had some pickled Northern and they wouldn't give up their pickling recipe, but it had turned all that into just butter. And it was like the best Northern I'd ever had. And they held that stuff like a fucking state secret, you know? Like, well, so, so we eat a bunch of carp and everybody thinks I'm nuts. Remember I say that, but um, we eat a lot of carp 
And I, I trap turtles really hard in the summertime, which by the way, you should come down, open invitation. You should come down sometime. We'll give the turtles hell. It's a lot of fun wrestling an angry manhole cover that wants to eat your face out of a swamp. Um, but I use the red meat, you know, the, the people call it the mud vein, the red meat down the middle for turtle bait. And then the white meat that I fillet out to the carp, um, I pressure can that I roll up those uh, strips of meat, pack them into jelly jars, and I pressure can it, and all those bones do the same thing. Oh, and so you're pressure them, cooking it? Dust. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I pressure, I pressure can it, so it's pressure cooking them, but then it's shelf stable. And then whenever I want to make fish patties, or I want to make latkes, or whatever else, like or casseroles, it's just like tuna. Well, so I just to make sure, you know, because that's something I actually want to talk about in the future too is canning, right? So, like, you know, again, there's water baths, there's different ways of doing it, but we're saying the same thing. You're pressure cooking it, but it's canned and it's shelf stable. Look, I'm eating applesauce from eight years ago that I made eight years ago that I just Heck busted yeah. into that stuff of applesauce. So, you know, but I canned it, right? So that's, yeah. that's pretty badass. Uh, Heck look, yeah, man. I, Okay, where do you want to end this? We're at 45. We kind of try to keep these a little bit, but you know, got to have you talk more about this. But I and I hope people are seeing it. So I'm not espousing one diet or whatever the case is, but I am espousing this man's lifestyle. Get out there, you, you, you have some gear, but more important, you got to know what you're doing. But get out there, have some gear. He makes great gear. I still got to get out, and, and that's one of my things. Like, because I just I love. I'm like, oh, dude, this is going to come in so handy when I field dress. And then, of course, you know, God said, oh, you think so? I'm going to punish you and you won't be able to hunt for four years. But now, well, you know, dude, dude I, I need I need to get you. I, you need to get a bigger field knife sometime, man. Just reach out to me. I'll, I'll, I'll well, get you set up with something bigger. We can have some conversation because I think there might be something, you know, some other little, com, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I want, let's do that offline. But yeah, yeah. But oh, um, yeah, for sure. But, you know, the final comment too, like what I really like about what you're doing, Evan, is this, it's not only like, I personally think it's healthy. I think it's way natural. You don't have all kinds of bullshit chemicals and you don't know how it's processed. And it's the joy of you being out there in nature as it was designed, harvesting that animal. And then, uh, and I apologize. I'm, I'm, you may have said this and I just kind of assumed it because I know it, but like, and you're processing it all yourself, right? You're doing all oh, yeah. the, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's just another yep. thing you're being, that's. I've done, I only did one deer the whole time I've been on the agency where I dropped it off someplace else. And, and I said, I'm never doing that again because I wasn't even sure I got my animal. Right. You know, like, yep. nope. And then, I, and I did that for just like expedience, like, oh, I'm really busy. I don't have the time. I'll pay these guys to do it. Now, F that I'm processing and I, and that's all you do. So whether it's wild turkey, grouse, um, I really kind of want to get into bear hunting. Uh, but then, oh, you know, yeah. but, but for me, you know, you know, turkey and, um, and deer, but deer, I have, I don't go to anybody else. I do it all myself. And then Evan, maybe the final comment right there from your part is the joy I feel and the, the, the closeness that I feel to not only that animal, but the whole everything, right. You know, like I am being a man doing what a man's supposed to do. And then I'm going to make that food. Now I, I know how to cook it and I'm going to add it with some wild rice or some potato, whatever you're doing. And, and it's such a good uh, and like you said, you know, like you, you have beef from the grocery store nowadays and you're kind of like, that's kind of, it's not even like right anymore, you know? Yep. You want to, you want to yeah, take it, the vote on something like that? Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to me that like a lot of people say deer is gamey and I think it's just what you're used to. Everybody says that whitetail deer is gamey or wild boar is gamey. And it's because they expect it to taste like a domestic animal. It's not any game eats job to taste like beef, pork, and chicken. And I think that once, well, I don't think I know that once you eat those kind of things on a regular basis and not, not just deer, I mean, I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're eating chicken from the store all the time. Yep. When you eat beef and you're only eating chicken all the time, you eat beef, it tastes weird. It tastes wild. It tastes gamey. If you eat deer all the time, I'm speaking from experience now, I eat deer all the time. I've gone through like six deer in the last four months, as far as like eating in my house. And, uh, if I get beef, it tastes gamey. Like it tastes, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It just yeah. it tastes very different, very wild because my palate's not used to it. So, I mean, I guess the takeaway is capitalize on what you have access to and in your area and uh, don't let anybody tell you that something's gamey or something's not fit to eat or something's not as good as it can be because uh, they're limited by their imagination. You've got a whole lot, a whole wealth of resources around you. Take advantage of them. And 
you know, I know there's some men out there who maybe, you know, no one in the live stream, but maybe somebody on demand be like, you know, ah, you know, cooking's a woman job. I, I couldn't disagree with you more on that as well. Like every man <laughs> should be able to cook at least a dozen meals, a dozen hip pocket meals, hip pocket meals. And then to Evan's point, and if you're doing that, I remember the first time I did. So I've got this really special, like, you know, and I, I'll share it. I got it off the internet. It's not my recipe, but I got this for a glaze to make with my back straps. I would have people who like, oh, I don't like venison. It's so gamey. And then Evan, to your point, I'm like, well, you know, if you're eating a 16 point buck, I mean, maybe that's like eating your grandfather, right? You know, like, you know, but, but anyway, so here's the back strap, you know, and I, I think the largest buck that I took, you know, myself was, was eight, you know, and, but I knew my animal population and I knew what I could be doing and, you know, let that 16, that big ass 16 point buck continue to procreate, you know, so I get really healthy, you know, does and, and fawns and uh, bucks, but, but I, I was making these back straps with this, you know, kind of a reduction, you know, like a glaze and, you know, just serving it on little crackers with cheese and all my city friends were like, Oh, this shit, well, that's really good. What is that? I'm like, Oh, that's the deer I just shot. You know, you know, they're like, what, you know, like, like, yeah, no, it's, you're eating venison right now. They're like, what, you know, like, so yeah, you know, big visc. Don't tell my wife. I just said that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, David, I apologize. I haven't been shown. Did you show big visc's uh, I, uh, food comment that he does all the hey, cooking? Mark, Mark yeah. I hate to do this, man, but I actually have to jet. I'm running yep. a little later than I planned on. But thank you well, so we much did. for having me. Um, I'll just close out real quick and let you pick it back up. But uh, anybody that wants to check me out, I'm Sambita Custom Knives on Instagram, Facebook. And uh, if you want to, you know, give me a call and ask questions about knives, um, you can text me or call me. My number is 740-270-9057. I'd love to chat with you about your next knife. And uh, otherwise, thanks a ton for having me. I'll see you guys later. Hey, Evan, really appreciate you coming on. And I know you got a big function going on right now. So we're, where there's a whole bunch of alcohol and wild game to consume. So <laughs> thank you, sir. I'll see you, man. We'll see thank you later. You All right. Thank you much. All right, everybody. That was Evan Sambita from Sambita uh, Custom Knives. I'm glad you stayed with me. Hey, and look, and I apologize. You know, Evan's a great guy. I love talking to him. I wasn't really paying no attention. I, I, I'm sure David went through everybody's chat, but David, I'm going to turn it to you. Find out where you left off. I, I kind of been paying attention. Um, I'm not sure where you left off. I'll try to address the last comments and then we'll wrap it up. We definitely went long. So might as well just like slow it down and actually do the right thing and just kind of reiterate who's who in the hood. And um, so David, if you don't mind, uh, take it from where we are. And I'm just going to try to catch up to you. Uh, well, did you get angry Viking veteran? Hey, angry Viking veteran. Nice to see you over here, brother, man. I just don't know if uh, David missed you before, but I didn't see your name pop up, but yum. And David, I think you were right here. Is this where we were, David? I love Pike. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Is this where we were or David? I can still see you. That's not, uh, why don't you take us where we left off, David? And I'll get out of here. See, there I am, micromanaging. He's supposed to be doing it right now. But I'm looking at all these comments I didn't get to see. Yeah, actually, David, let me micromanage for a second. I didn't see some of these things, and I just want to end up on these. And maybe you did post them, but we got Anne, uh, you know, thanking for what we do and sharing with us. Yeah, Anne, stay tuned. We're going to try to do this more. These are live streams. This one went way longer. This is almost twice as long as it normally would be. But, again, Evan's a great guy. A lot of talk about we're trying to do the live streams at more like 30 minutes, 35 minutes. But there's more to come on all of these type of subjects, canning, hunting, fishing, all that. So stay tuned. Then I've got uh, Elf, the price of meat now. My wife and I drove past the roadkill and I said to her, oh, that one looks fresh. My good man, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, I've actually cut out backstraps for people in that same situation right there. So then we got Big Visc. Uh, I love cooking. I do almost the cooking. Cleaning is... Yeah, well, or, you know, don't tell that to your drill sergeant. He won't like that. You know, he's going to make you clean. Uh, yeah, then the big this. Yeah, there you go. Cover your ass. Don't tell my wife I said that. Uh, and then, David, this is what I did see you pop up. Um, and I think I was getting caught up. I saw you pop up. John's can't eat the horns. And then we go, Alf, with all this cooking going on, how are you making uh, with those aprons? Uh, I actually just had a conversation with a different uh, individual today. So, uh, the apron. So we've still got the assault ruck and the skeleton chassis. You know, I can't take, I can't take priority over you guys and gals. So we had our week just was a little bit slower this week. 
Uh, so we're going to have to slide our stuff right into next week. And then once we're finished with that, that's going to be the drop. And I think right now, Alf, I'm probably just going to do five as the first drop in one color pattern just to see what people think. And then we might do a second drop after that. That's the kind of, and you know the deal, you know, I'm going to end up giving one away in a contest. So just stay tuned. But, but then after the contest, I think I'll have five. Um, all right. Uh, sorry. I just saw David. You guys can't see him. And I don't know what he's doing, but it was funny. Uh, it was, I was like, Whoa, what the hell is that caught my attention? Gene from across the pond. Thank you both. Woo. Hey, Gene, the woo is all you, sir. And, uh, and then we got angry Viking uh, veteran coming in. Glad to catch you. I came in like, Hey, glad that you could uh, join us over here. Really appreciate it. All right. 55 minutes. Thanks for hanging out. Totally way longer. I, I probably should have rethought that I added a little bit too much in there than I, I really should. What do you say? Well, because I knew we we're going to talk about food. My eyes were bigger than my stomach. You know, and it's like, oh, Evan's going to be on. I don't want to do this. I want to do that. And that so nicely coincided with I was going through gear. I found four of these guys. I've got a bunch of these, but you ain't getting mine, right? I got mine, but I found four more of these. See, these are the shotgun S cards. So just to reiterate, we had, uh, well, we had four winners. It was close enough. We're just going to split up in that. Uh, Mick. Uh, yeah, from across the pond, let me just find you real quick and I'll pull you up. Yeah, right here. And it was Mick who was the actual winner, but he's across the pond with Gene. Oh, Mick, Mick maybe you and Gene get together and have a, a beer or a vodka or something like that. But, but Mick was the real winner, but he said, give all four away to the next four people. And those people were John W. Dave is, Dave isn't funny. Big Vusk. Just don't let your wife know. And then Al, uh, Al, 3553. So you gentlemen, shoot me an email, mark at center-line-systems. And most of you already know that. And I will throw these in the mail for you tomorrow. And uh, and once you get them, if you got questions about the setup, just give me a call and uh, and I'll talk you through it. It's really simple though. Most of you will be able to figure it out. But, you know, and again, there's a couple different ways you could wear it. You know, take all the webbing off and then just wear it on your belt line if you want it there. You could Velcro it to a plate carrier. I, I don't think the video of us field testing these uh, is still up. I think that's private, but it was actually designed for something else. And it was a really cool way where you could do something like this. And the other one popped up and now you could be doing reloads. So it was kind of cool. But um, anyway, but you guys shoot me an email. I'll drop these in the mail for you tomorrow. Uh, everybody, before we go, just say a huge shout out to David. You can't see him. David is going to be taking over. It's not mission critical podcast, um, but We've been doing some announcements over on the old Mission Critical podcast channel, but David liked so much what Redbeard and I were trying to do. He is uh, standing up, to, stepping up to the plate. He's going to take a swing, trying to keep that community going, you know, working with each other, sharing information, talking about subjects. Um, it, it's going to be his show. We're, we're just trying to help him as best we can to get everything going. Um, so stay tuned. More announcements coming up on that. Um and we're we're posting some stuff still over on Mission Critical. If you were following us over there, over there, and then but once he's up and running, I'll give a shout out over here on Centerline Systems as well. And we got a whole bunch of thank you, David's coming. Uh, oh, here, right there. Actually, let me show this one first, David. All right, so look for that. So David, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. That is the name you decided upon, correct? Yep, right there. Well, actually, David, why the hell not? Uh, we're already at 58 minutes. If you don't mind, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and I'll bring you on and just, you can just say hi to everybody real quickly. Do you want to do that? Thumbs up. All right. I'm going to add David to the stage here. Boys and girls, meet David. He is going to be handling the Liberty Zealot podcast. He was watching us on Mission Critical uh, podcast, didn't want to see it go, and is going to grab the reins and do a million times better job on his side. David, you're, you're mute, sir. Ha! Ah, I got to say it. Mark, over on Mission Critical, at least once. Can you hear me now? Five times an episode. It was Mark, your mic is muted. This time it was somebody else. David, we got you now, sir. Yep. All right. Well, I don't know. You guys are a tough hack to follow, so I'm going to do my best. I hope to see you all there, and I'm looking forward to keeping this train rolling. Let's do it. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, David speaks for himself, but just, you know, a very liberty oriented, community oriented, everybody's involved, just like here in the live stream tonight. You guys are just as much of it as I am. If I'm just out here, so I look at myself in a camera, like that's not what this is all about. It's 
interacting with good men and women out there, good people who still get it, who care, who want to get out there in nature, who want to stand up against injustice, you know, X, Y's and Z. So give them a follow. Um, and David, one, how about that? When's the first podcast? Why don't we just plug you right now? This coming Monday, 1830. So Monday of next week, uh, that's the 22nd, I believe, correct? 22nd yes. of April. Yep. 22nd of April at 1830 Central Daylight Time. And it, it's going to just be the Liberty Zealot podcast. And is that on YouTube, Rumble? Where can they find you? Yeah, I'm going to try to put it on Rumble, YouTube, um, probably anywhere I can, really. Okay. Well, so start on the main media stuff, right? YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, you know, and then see where it goes. Cause he's got some pretty cool plans for some other stuff, but you know, you, you, you know, the deal, as much as we hate screw tube, you know, you can find them there. I just got to throw this out there for you, David. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, John, thank you very much for the, you know, thanks for the show. David was uh, learning the software here so he can get better at, it, but I got to end it with this one right here from Al. Uh, be nice to Dave. Remember space odyssey. I do. Al, I do remember that. I will be nice to Dave. So no Thank you, everyone. I appreciate the support. All right. All right. That's it. That's ending this here live stream. You know the deal. If you got questions, comments, reach out anytime. I'll do the best. Thank you to the four winners tonight. You guys know who you are. Reach out to me. I'll get you one of these S cards. Um, the concealment wallet version. Get it from Jack over at Black Scout Survival because he's got all the lickies and chewies you might want to put in there if that's how you're rolling. Uh, otherwise you can get it if you want it like you know maybe in, in our custom kind of colors and stuff uh, you can get it for me edcs those are on the website again better to have and not need than need and not have so reach out anytime if you've got questions comments i already said that i'll help you out the best i can it's been a long day boys and girls all right yes. as always keep thinking keep moving never quit we'll catch you next time all right everybody be good Woo!